Hello, 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 everybody. I am J Malls of J Malls Gaming, and I want to give some tips, tricks, a brief guide, if you will, a jabroni's guide to Metaphor Re Fantasio. Last time I went over my favorite build, but this time I really want to delve into the specifics of what I've been doing that I think have really helped with my playthrough. Because I know this game can be a very hard game for a lot of people, and I thought, you know what? I got some ideas that can really absolutely shred fights in this game. So, so, the first thing we want to focus on, for me at least, are the followers that I think you should level up or at least prioritize in order to just have a really smooth experience. Things that give you a lot of benefits or more XP, stuff like that. The most powerful one to me, in my mind, is leveling up Maria. Maria is a follower where there's two main breaking points. The first one is at rank 4 because you acquire this thing called Purpose, which increases post-battle experience. More experience means more level ups, which means all your characters just are stronger overall. That's particularly nice and powerful. I don't even use Healer as an archetype myself. It's just that these additional benefits make Maria, in my opinion, so powerful and worth leveling up. Because the other thing she gives you is speed cooking, so that when you're cooking in the Gauntlet Runner, time does not elapse. This allows you to put out a bunch of dishes and give you a variety of effects, like generating MP just by running around a dungeon, giving you plus like 200 MP as a consumable or whatever you can cook. Now you don't have to waste time doing that so you can allocate that time to doing other followers or leveling up your royal virtues. Very powerful thing right there in my opinion. And when you get to rank 7, which I'm still working on myself, you get even more post-battle XP, but also when cooking in the Gauntlet Runner's kitchen, an additional dish can be made, or will be made. So it's just an overall really powerful follower to have in your arsenal because the effects are just really good. The other one I would recommend personally, are the ones for the party members that you are actively utilizing. For me, I use Stroll and Hulkenberg a lot, because for most of the early to mid game, they'll be your like designated party members. And the reason I recommend leveling them up is not only to unlock the higher ranks of the archetypes, but specifically so that when you're in that lineage, you gain additional inheritance slots because you will fight a variety of enemies in this game and just having access to different skills can be an absolute boon. It's so nice. For me, though, I also use Faker a lot, and I'm going to be recommending Faker a lot, so I would recommend going the path of Alonzo with the follower, getting that rank higher and higher, because Faker, in my opinion, is just such a powerful archetype, for a very simple reason. There's one skill in particular. The debuffs you acquire are very nice. Do not get me wrong here. You get to reduce enemies' attack, agility, and defense. And you stack these up, and it's a very powerful boon in your repertoire. But the main thing to get is Faker's Roguery. It does have a hefty MP cost, being 61, at least for me right now. But you may read this and go, j -Mals, I don't care about chance of inflicting forget on one enemy. It's the adding turn icons or removing them at random. That sounds risky. It does sound like a gamble because sometimes it can be. But you can, like, tilt the odds in your favor if that makes sense. Chances are you can put your faker on the character that goes first in the turn order. So if you ambush an enemy or you start a boss fight, you start with your faker character or the character who has this skill inherited. That means you can just throw it out immediately and if you don't get plus three or four turn icons immediately, you can reset the battle to the start of it and just go again. So you can just keep going until the RNG is in your favor. This can be a life-changing course of action during certain boss fights because you get so many turns you can just pile up. It can really make some fights comical just by the nature of how many turns you actually acquire. And this also synergizes with another element to this game that I would fully recommend you taking advantage of, and that is your synthesis skills. They sound really expensive because they require two turn icons, and they are expensive, don't get me wrong, but good god are they particularly powerful. And the one that I find to be the most useful, the most powerful, are the ones tied to Warrior's lineage, specifically with Stroll. I have him to his max archetype, Samurai, but it's not even that. The synthesis skills you get are so powerful. Phantom Sword Swarm 
deals medium physical slash damage four to six times to one enemy, and if it's a killing blow, you add a turn icon. You get extreme physical wind damage to all enemies with wind blade, and eventually I'll get Crimson Mood Sword Art. It's just pretty much all of his synthesis skills, truck damage. And if you pair that with the debuffs you can apply on Faker, and the buffs you can apply on yourself using another archetype called Commander, it just makes it so you can pump out a ton of damage. I obliterate half a boss's health bar simply using this strategy. It can be a difference maker. And for Samurai, you're going to need to level up General. And General and specifically Commander give you quite a few nice abilities. Formation of Vega moves all allies to the front row, but increases their attack by two ranks for three turns. So you're applying a plus two attack buff to all of your party members. It's a very powerful ability. That's This is the one I always inherit, and I have it on my MC personally, but you can put it on Stroll if you want. Formation of Vega is a great ability. I like having it not on Stroll, leveling up command enough for someone else so that they, they can inherit Formation of Vega, because on Stroll's turn, I want him using his synthesis skills, or his regular samurai warrior skills, or whatever. That's what I want him to do. Now, when it comes to who I have as my protagonist, I use Merchant personally because a lot of these dungeons can go on for quite a while and contain very powerful enemies. I'm playing on hard mode, bear in mind. And because of that, you'll be chunking through your MP a lot. I like having Merchant or say a Brawler, who I used early game, I've swapped over to Merchant because Merchant acquires all this gold just by defeating and stunning enemies. But I can use Merchant with gold attack so I can just throw out a little bit of money and do a bunch of almighty damage so I don't have to care about the enemy's resistance. This thing crits like half the time, I swear to god. And it's just overall really efficient for me. You pair that with Formation of Vigor, which is that plus two attack buff, and I can chunk out a lot of damage on Merchant and Stroll. And again, a lot more turns because of Faker. And then I just have Hulkenberg kind of vibing there. Uh, I have her in the Knight skill, or like the Knight tree, mainly because I think it's cool. But she acquires a few buffs, debuffs, and just heals. So, Shield Arts gives the enemy an agility debuff. I love applying agility debuffs onto strong enemies, because when they miss, it turns the entire tide of the battle. Turns they may not have ordinarily survived now become far more manageable. She also gains a heal, which it sounds weak because it's weak HP recovery, but in this early to mid game that I'm at, it's so powerful. And this is my general strategy when it comes to Metaphor V Fantasio. I'm using Faker mainly for Faker's roguery to give myself a whole bunch of turns. I'm then able to use those turns on synthesis skills, which are really powerful, but the trade-off for them is ordinarily that they cost two turn icons, but if I already have plus four on top of the ones I start with, then it's not nearly as detrimental to me. I can apply a lot of buffs quickly with commander and general skills, and then I can just unload damage with synthesis and merchant skills. It's a very powerful combination. And then there's just a few other things that I think are beneficial to know. Um, you want to use the bathroom and the gauntlet runner on idols day specifically because you get a plus one luck stat buff. Uh, it's permanent. Luck is very nice. It's just an overall really good stat to have because it makes beneficial outcomes on things that are random more likely to happen. Uh, you want to take a shower every day. This game, you know advocates for good hygiene we love that smell good you want to do that but you also gain 100 xp so it's just free xp check your pantry as well for free food and also uh this is especially true for the persona fans out there because generally speaking vendor items in those games are kind of garbage they are not in this game you can get some really powerful vendor items in this game they are very pricey but if you're grinding a bunch of mobs with merchant chances are you're not going to be really struggling for money all that often so you can elect to get some very nice items that just make it so you do a lot more damage or whatnot including the armor you can acquire in this game from the vendors can be quite nice oh there'll also be a day by the way when you're going to the fourth location i believe that you can hang out with a bunch of different characters, hang out with Basilio, he gives you an accessory that 
gives all stats plus five. Very powerful item there. I don't want to spoil the story here, but just if you come across a situation on a boat where you can hang out with Basilio or a bunch of other NPCs, if you want to see the other ones, save scum it. But I would recommend doing the Basilio one because you get the White Sand Rose accessory that gives plus five to all your stats. Very nice item just to have. So yeah, that would be my overall guide to... Tackling Metaphor V Fantasio. Buy MP items when you can from vendors because you will be hungry for MP at certain dungeons in this game. If you can look ahead to like what requirements will be needed for future archetype upgrades. So for this one, for Hulkenberg, I'm going to need to get Wizard to rank 10. So to unlock this one later down the line, I need to put a lot of XP into just Wizard, which I could have done earlier had it been cognizant of this. Same thing with Stroll when it comes to Samurai. That needs general rank 10. So maybe you want to grind some dungeons with archetypes on characters that are rank 20 just to pull in those archetype XP items so you can just dump them all on the ones you want to level up all at once. There's a lot of things you can like work around in this game and once the flow of this game really starts to click, good god can you feel like a force of nature. So yeah, I'm gonna call the video there for the day. Hope those tips were beneficial to you all out there. If they were, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe, have a great day, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Till we meet again.